I'm Sydney. And I'm Julie. And this is Restaurant and Retail Revelations. Welcome to Restaurant and Retail Revelations, a podcast spotlighting movers and shakers in the restaurant and retail industries brought to you by Revel Systems, provider of the leading cloud POS platform on the market. In this episode, we're excited to talk with Dave Rausch, Director of Operations at Dewey's Pizza. And for those less familiar with Dewey's, it's a Midwest neighborhood pizza chain that has specialized in handmade pizza since 1998. And today, Dewey's has 25 locations, all corporate owned and counting. So if you are an enthusiast of specialty pies with clever names and premium toppings like smoked ham, brown sugar caramelized red onions, roasted garlic aioli, and more, keep listening for insights from one of the people behind the pizza brand's operations. Dave, thank you so much for joining us on the podcast today. Well, thanks for having me. I look forward to it. And just, you know, right off the bat, I'd love to kind of get your take on what sets Dewey's apart from other pizza brands in a competitive marketplace. Yeah, great question. I think what sets Dewey's apart is our people. I feel our people in throughout the organization from the bottom to the top are some of the best people I've come across in my 30 years of service industry work. And I think our products from a pizza restaurant are next level. We have what I would say are some of the freshest ingredients, some of the most unique offerings in the business. And, you know, one thing I'm proud of is we don't own a freezer in the organization. I would say the other thing that sets us apart is our partners that help make Dewey's Pizza successful. We guide ourselves on our purpose and values, and we look for that when we are partnering with other companies, uh, such as Revel. We spent several meetings in St. Louis and Ohio, and we even had a meeting in Dallas with the Revel team um, and vetted them out and used our purpose and values and felt aligned with Revel. Um, there's companies that we've worked with in the St. Louis market for 22 years and companies that are still with us in the Cincinnati market from the first store. That's a great answer. I love a brand that focuses on their people. I think quality people here make quality pizza. We got a little context on Dewey's. Dave, I want to learn a little bit more about your role specifically at Dewey's. What are some of your key areas of focus as director of operations? Yeah, I would say as director of operations, first and foremost, you know, overseeing the day-to-day -day activities with our 25 locations and commissaries, ensuring organization is managed and performing efficiently and effectively. I work closely with the regional managers to ensure that the stores have everything that they need. I also work on the company and operational strategies. And a big thing for us is empowering our employees to make the proper, to give them the freedom to make the correct decision. And, you know, they're the front line. Our employees are the ones dealing with the guests on a day-to-day -day basis. So by empowering them to make decisions and understand why we do things the way we do, I think, uh, really is a key component of my job. And last but not least, I would say upholding our brand standards. Uh, over the last 25 years, customers have come to expect next level product from us, just in the service, hospitality, and pizza that we serve. So yeah, that's a ton of details to to factor in. And it's especially tricky balancing the amount of control that you maintain and then trusting that you've hired the right folks to carry out this vision. That's that's a big role. And so I'd actually like to learn a little bit more about how you found your way to Dewey's Pizza. You know, are restaurant operations a career pathway that you expected for yourself or was it a more of an organic transition? 
Well, it started a long time ago at Michigan State University. I was in the uh, the hotel and restaurant management program through the business school there. And out of school, I started with a pretty large national chain in the restaurant business. Worked there for nine years, learned a lot, met a lot of great people. It really set the foundation for my love for restaurants with the fast pace. Uh, and I really, really experienced great relationships. I would say the person I would mark as my mentor uh, is somebody that I met early on in my career out of college. And Dewey's was starting up. Andrew, the owner, had reached out to me through a, a friend gauging my interest. So that's when it the seeds had been planted for Dewey's early on uh, in the conception. I think Dewey's only had one store at that time. Uh, I had lifelong friend that lived in Cincinnati and started working at Dewey's uh, at that time. After about nine years with the large chain, I switched my career over to the retail business and worked for a large national chain, followed my mentor uh, over there. And I still stayed in contact throughout, we'll say that that was 17 years uh, with Dewey's Pizza. And I just made a decision to, my friend was still working for Dewey's. So I came out to the St. Louis market and actually worked a shift or two with him. And what I did in that time was really focus on the employees. Being in restaurants for nine years, I wasn't worried about how to make pizzas or anything like that. I was really wanted to focus on the culture. Uh, so I interviewed every employee at the store, just not sit down interview, but talk to them and probably spoke to 30 to 40 guests as they were leaving. And I was just blown away by the following and the culture that the employees spoke so highly of Dewey's and the customers spoke so highly of Dewey's and the pride that everyone took in servicing those customers. It almost felt like it was everything that my first restaurant job was missing. And if I would have gone back and said, I wish as an organization, we did these 10 things, I found those thing, 10 things with Dewey's. So I decided to come aboard. I was still living in Michigan at the time. I trained in Cincinnati and drove home on weekends and then uh, headed out to St. Louis. I started you know, my journey with Dewey's at store number eight. I've been uh, been with Dewey's for 16 years. Wow, what a great story. And I think it's proof that the right mentorship and the right friendships can really go a long way in you know, your career trajectory and where you end up, they really matter. And Dave, I assume that something that makes your life a little easier as director of operations is that all Dewey's restaurants are company owned rather than franchised. So how do you feel that this uh, company-owned model benefits the brand and the guests as well? I think my first job was franchise. The large chain that I spoke of uh, did franchising. And what I appreciate about the company-owned side of it is the alignment and control over all aspects of the business. The employees aren't hearing different things uh, because it's a franchise, every person in our organization from the dishwasher to the president have the same goals when in a building and we follow those goals. And I think our purpose and values are a big foundation that drive us towards excellence. So our people, again, back to the purpose and values, it's common vision and lifestyle that we use these tools. Uh, in addition, the training and development that we have control over has created the culture. And I also think it has allowed us to do some things that 
is not really heard of in other restaurants. It's interesting in interviewing probably over 150 managers in the past five years. There's just some things that we do at Dewey's that you can't find at other restaurants. Um, Work-life balance, you know, our managers, I would put up work less hours than any other restaurant business. The uh, incentives that we have for our employees, I really think are things that uh, are hard to find at other organizations. Yeah, that's awesome. And, you know, we talk a lot about people, especially within the hospitality space. It sounds like that is very much a part of what works at Dewey's in addition to something that you guys strive for. And so, you know, on the flip side of that, something that people don't often associate with hospitality and restaurants is technology. And yet, I'm sure as, you know, director of operations, you encounter that quite a bit. So I would love to hear your perspective on just the role of technology in the day-to-day operations at Dewey's. Yeah, I think as a next level company, uh, technology has really helped improve our business. It's interesting, I would say, you know, when I first started my first 10 years with Dewey's was you would probably say by today's standards uh, was a little bit archaic um, with the systems that we used, uh, the changes that were made as far as technology, we were definitely, uh, slow lagging in that department. And I think over the last five years, we've really learned to embrace technology and we've collected the data to see how the technology has really helped our operations as far as efficiency um, and and quality. Uh, So one thing that I think we've leaned into more is the online ordering systems uh, through Revel. We recently have installed the KDS system that's really helped with efficiencies as well. And we are also implementing an LMS for our learning management solutions that we think will uh, really help improve operations. Well, it sounds like you guys are embracing technology uh, with a nice warm hug over there at Dewey's. And I know one way Dewey's is approaching the Revel point of sale platform um, within the organization a little bit differently than some of our other clients is that you actually use guided self installations. Um, I know one of your colleagues actually shared the quote that everyone in our company opened a box when referring to the actual installation, which we love. So why is it important for your team that everyone is really included and ingrained in the installation process? I think it stems from the comfort we first had with Revel right from the beginning. Uh, We had done our due diligence and had met with several other companies And just the relationship, again, going back to purpose and values, we felt very aligned with Revel. And, you know, when you you listen to the sales people, you're always, you always have that checkbox. Oh, they said this, they said this. And one thing that really stood out to me was the support and, you know, the next level support that Revel would provide. But one thing I really appreciate about Dewey's, and like I said before, where we were slow to embrace the technology, uh, you know, seven years ago as a regional manager or director of operations, I wore several hats where, you know, I was the IT person, I was telling them how to reset a printer. And I think it's important for Dewey's to know the system not just use the system and then push off the issues onto Revel. So I think as from the IT perspective, they really wanted to touch the product, know the product and be a source for our employees to be able to call for our own IT department, not just putting all of that on Revel. So yeah, I was in... Uh, one of our locations at midnight 
helping our IT department uh, get Revel installed. It was fun. And it was it was great to see their uh, growth in doing it. I think, I'm well, put it this way, I'm glad I was store 12 and not store one because they had the system down pat. And I was only there for a couple hours rather than the first couple of stores that took six or seven hours. But yeah, I think it's it was really important for our IT department to be able to touch the product and know the aspect of it. See how the cookie was made, just not eat it. There you go. Yeah, that's, you know, it kind of gives a, a new spin on on the concept of a pizza party is a late night tech Im implementation. <laughs> but um, uh, so I, I really love that concept of like knowing the product, getting really familiar with it, making it so that there's nothing that is frightening or, you know, super off limits for your team. And yet, with that said, I am curious to know some of the guardrails that your team has in place to ensure that whether it's tech or, or a different facet of your operations, the customer experience for both dine-in and off-premises guests is exceptional and that quality that people have come to expect from Dewey's. Yeah. <clears throat> and, you know, that's interesting, as you say, both dine-in and off-premise through COVID, there there was a shift of that where you know prior to covid we i would say we're about a 60% split 60% dine in 40% carry out and obviously through covid we were went to 100% uh carry out and then coming out of covid and still today it shifted to now doing a little more carry out than dine in so some of the guardrails we have in place is again when i spoke earlier about the president of the company to the dishwasher knows the goals of the restaurant. I think those are some of the guardrails that we have is our ticket times and uh, the communication within the stores, ensuring that all those goals are met. Uh, we do have a follow of our core processes where product quality is number one and hospitality is number two. So those are some guardrails we have in place. And of course, our purpose and values help guide us in making decisions. Uh, we do our shoppers program and guest reviews uh, that help give us guidance. And, you know, I think uh, some of the other guardrails we have is Rebels really helped us uh, in making the kitchens more efficient with the KDS system. Uh, you know, uh, as an agent, some people would say, not everyone embraces change, but we really took the mindset of not so much change, but improvement. Um, and it's really helping uh, with the communication between the front of the house and back of the house. Uh, 10 years ago, we would have to pick up the phone and say, uh, Sydney's here for her pizza. And the kitchen had a phone in there. <laughs> now we're able to do it electronically the front of the house is able to see uh, how the pizza is tracking and how much time is left on there so it's really helped streamline the communication uh, which has made it easier to focus on putting pizza out quicker yeah that's great it, it almost seems impossible that you know you used to be able to run a business like that and and not have the data-driven factors to consider um, you know about the process afterwards. And Dave, you mentioned the pandemic, which I think is almost impossible not to do, uh, you know, when you're thinking about the evolution of your business as of late. And as marketplace shifts like inflation, supply chain, labor, you know, continue to drive how businesses evolve, what technology factors is Dewey's, is the Dewey's team most closely considering as it relates to your growth and um, your continued success today? Well, you know, I think we're very excited about building a closer bond with our guests as from the carry out side of it. Uh, as I said, there's been a shift to the, with the carry out going. So I think, uh, you know, we're looking at how do we communicate better with that carry out guest. One of the biggest challenges is for us has been providing the accurate promise times um, and ensuring that, hey, if we tell you 60 minutes, we have that a hot pizza ready in 60 minutes for you. So one of the things 
that I think we're leaning into is the, the KMS system. And we're getting better data on that, on how long it takes us to make pizzas. And during peak hours, <clears throat> it, we're using that data to keep our times lower. And we're really leaning into uh, the texting side. We're trying to perfect that with the Revel development team right now, where we're able to text the guests when their pizza is being made. And we are also looking into the, the ability to geo track our guests. Uh, I think one of the things I was very proud of during COVID and heard from several guests is from the restaurant side of it, they thought that we had the best curbside delivery service. Uh, and we're looking to even expand on that and improve that as one of our systems to uh, to meet the guests where they want to be met. Yeah. Um, and, you know, COVID did definitely encourage a lot of innovation. And so, you know, that was kind of the silver lining, I, I think, is that a lot of new options were uncovered during that time. And um, and it's always great to see when folks were able to take advantage and, and use that moving forward. So, um, you know, one thing you've mentioned a couple times, ticket times, and um, uh, then also at the at the beginning of this conversation, you also talked about quality being more important than price. And so I, I've actually got a separate question for you next, but I, I wanted to ask about those. So um, what is a target ticket time for your team? And then can you give us just an example of like the kinds of ingredients that you're looking at for your pizzas? Ticket times will fluctuate. Our ideal ticket time is five minute salads on dine in, 15 minute pizzas on dine in, and five minute dessert delivery on dine in. Our carryout times will fluctuate depending on the business. And our goal is to keep carryout times to 60 or 70 minutes, depending on the flow of business and how it comes in. But there are times where, uh, I wish I could show you the video, but we there are times where we can get in excess of over 100 tickets in an hour or 100 pizzas to make in an hour. So depending on how that flows in is how we have to uh, manage the carry outside of that. And we have a marketing team that is really involved with the food and uh, putting the guardrails about around our brand promise, right? So they they kind of help ensure that we stay in line with that. And we have a individual who, one of the regional managers who also spends his time in culinary, trying to develop new products. Another cool thing that we've done is one of our uh, highest selling seasonal pizza is our Tito Santana. And that pizza actually was developed from one of our servers out of a St. Louis store. So something cool and unique we do is, and we're getting ready to launch this year, again, is a recipe remix where we do a little contest with the employees at the stores and let them come up and create what kind of pizzas they uh, think would be a good seller. So we've gotten a lot of good seasonal pizzas from that. Uh, as far as the product, uh, as we look, you know, obviously one thing with COVID that probably every restaurant has learned from is supply chain. And sometimes those products that we were always used to getting are not available to us anymore. And I think the team with the marketing team, the operations team and the procurement team just done a great job working together to make sure uh, that we stay ahead of the curve and that we have quality products to offer. Yeah, you know, that's, so those kind of um, blended together to to prep my next question, which is, you know, especially when you're doing these really cool initiatives, like allowing your team members to help inspire and influence the menu, Um but then also understanding that supply chain does not always have exactly what you had in mind available when you need it. What are the specific headwinds that you are keeping a close eye on just for the near future? 
couple things I think are continued tracking of the recession buzz that goes around, right? So our finance team and CFO uh, keep a close ear to the grindstone on that. Um, we are dealing with rapidly changing state legislation in some areas. We operate obviously in different states and you know, so we have different challenges in different states there that uh, change the operational landscape on us. Uh, real estate is something too that is always evolving where we're keeping our eye on real estate for uh, different opportunities to present themselves, leaning into some technology with uh, some other uh, real estate applications that we use to help pick uh, that we're leaning into to help see what data uh, presents itself in picking the correct locations. Um, and supply chain, I think, is something that uh, we are always looking at. And we have an individual within our company that does a great job giving us a, such advanced notice when something's going to run out or we're running short on product and we have to switch it. We don't just switch it to whatever we can get our hands on. We'll test the product to make sure that the quality is in line with our purpose and values. And sometimes we get lucky and that's the first product we go to. And sometimes it's the fifth product that we've tested. Yeah, it sounds like you're always, you know, weaving in that theme of quality, which is so great to see from a brand. And, you know, you've been in this industry a long time at various companies and even a long time, you spent much of your career at Dewey's, Dave. What's been one of the most surprising lessons you've taken away uh, from your role in operations at Dewey's so far? I would say there's a few surprising things I've taken away in my role so far. And one, I think COVID obviously were some lessons uh, to come out of that is, hey, we can be pretty efficient doing carry out. And that has led to us looking at uh, possibly opening up our first carry out only location in 2024. I was also very surprised at the resilient, the resiliency of our team where uh, I just think back to that first day of having to close down the stores and uh, we probably changed 50 different things within how we handled our operations in a month period and just the resiliency of our team and the pride that they took in helping figure things out. I would say embracing the tech and adapting to the technology has uh, really been a surprise at how well our team is focused on that. Um, and the curbside side of it, right? Uh, I think guests appreciate that when it's cold outside and there's a light drizzle going on there that we're uh, hitting our next level promise and delivering them uh, a fresh hot pizza right there through their window has been nice. But I would also say, you know, what's been surprising is early on with Dewey's, right, there there was the owner, the president, and one or two regional managers. And the growth that we've had over the last four years with the executive team, bringing on Chris as the head of our IT department, uh, we have a new CFO in place. Uh, we have a great new uh, executive marketing leader and staff and the trust that we have as an executive team is amazing. And the way that we work as a team uh, has really just inspired the belief that the foundation we have set as a company uh, will withstand any hurricane that comes our way. That is awesome. That is a great way to feel about your colleagues and about your business. Those are, you know, the kinds of reassurances that you want. And um, 
I don't know how many hurricanes make it to the St. Louis area, but you'll be ready if one does. So that's good to hear. So Dave, we've covered a lot of ground today. My my last question is kind of a catch-all, which is just that before we close things out, if there's anything we haven't covered, is there something that you would like to share with our listeners? If you haven't had Dewey's Pete yet, please make sure you make your way in and try our seasonal salad and seasonal pizza. And yeah, eat more pizza. <laughs> Noted. Will do. Uh, Sydney and I will take that and uh, act on it. Dave, thank you so much for your time today on the podcast. And we really look forward to our continued partnership with you and the, the entire Dewey's team. Well, thank you for your time. It was nice meeting in both of you. We have a truly wonderful partner in the team at Dewey's Pizza. I'm always so encouraged when I hear from operators who understand that people, quality, and service are the factors elevating restaurants from food suppliers to actually full experiences. Yes, Dave and his colleagues are wonderful to work with, and I'm only sorry that there isn't a Dewey's location a little bit closer to the metro Atlanta area. Today, I could absolutely go for a hot slice of one of their specialty pies. Amen to that. And I would say it's also a beautiful thing when a hospitality brand recognizes that technology can have an important role in allowing them to offer the level of service they desire without interfering with what their customers love about the brand. It's so true. Yeah. And with a heartfelt thank you to the entire Dewey's team and to Dave for his time and expertise on this podcast episode, we'll close things out with a reminder to Midwesterners to pay their nearest Dewey's location a visit. And to all our listeners, thank you for your attention today. To make sure you never miss new content, like and subscribe to Restaurant and Retail Revelations on Spotify, Apple Music, or wherever you get your podcasts. And we'll be back soon with even more revelations. Uh -huh.